All right. In this video, we're going to demonstrate SnowCAD board and ski design software. SnowCAD is a very simple to use CAD design program designed by a guy named Dan Graf from GrafSnowboards.com. Dan is a uh, avid snowboarder from the United Kingdom of all places that many years ago ran a website called Sticky Fingers, which was one of the main internet resources for hobby and uh, do-it-yourself snowboard and ski builders where they would trade information, ideas, board designs, ski designs, where to get materials, how to do the stuff, etc. on a forum that he hosted over there. A few years ago he morphed that site into what's called graphsnowboards.com and he moved to Switzerland. However, uh, he also at that time started a new IT company which has grown into a full-time business and the Graph Snowboard site doesn't have a whole lot of material on it anymore. But he does still host the Graph Snowboard's uh, SnowCAD design program there. And SnowCAD is just a fantastic little piece of software that is very easy to use compared to traditional CAD software. And I'm going to demonstrate quickly how to use it right now. First thing you need to do is go to the Graph Snowboards website and download the uh, SnowCAD files from them. When you download that, you're going to get a zip file that contains two, uh, a folder called LIB or library, and the SnowCAD X Java runtime actual ex executable file. Inside the library, there's a few different jar files. And what you want to do on your computer is create a folder somewhere. Now, I did it in my just C program files x86. I created a, a folder called SnowCAD X. And inside that folder, I basically installed the library folder and the SnowCAD X Java runtime. Then what I did is I right clicked on that and created a shortcut, which I've then put the shortcut in my start menu. So I just got to click the SnowCAD X in my start menu like any of these other programs to run it, to run it. And so I'll just click that now to open up the program. And it opens up the interface with a standard snowboard. Uh, if you want to do a ski design, what you want to need to do is just close that out and open up new ski. All these uh, various icons zoom in and zoom out to the ski or board in various areas. If you can see, if you click the plus, it just zooms in. The minus zooms out. Uh, the, this thing, uh, the, the, the magnifying glass with the slider, I guess, zooms into full screen. The nose, the midsection of this, or uh, the left midsection of the ski, the center of the ski, right midsection of the ski, and tail section of the ski. This little yellow ruler opens up a, tail, uh, a table of specifications that shows you the current specifications of your ski and board. So you can see in this case, this particular ski is a 173 with a running length of 146 or 1460 millimeters. The nose length is 150 millimeters, the tail length is 120, and so on and so forth for all the specifications. The beauty of how this program works is that it's just really simple. It is basically a click and drag program that has a bunch of different points that you can grab and simply pull on them and start changing the shape of your skier board. You want to ski with a kind of a blunt nose shape. Here, I'll zoom in on the nose shape so you can see better what we're doing. You just grab the handles. Oops, you got to grab right on the handles and you can drag the shape rounder. If you wanted a little bit pointer, more of a traditional old school powder ski design, you can do that. If you want to fill out the shape a little bit with the other handle, you grab right in the center of that. If you miss it, just kind of drags the whole shape. And you can start dragging. Now obviously you can do stupid stuff like this where it's creating this little uh, V here, so you've got to be careful not to do that. But within reason, you click and drag until you get a shape that you like. Same thing on the tail. This is kind of a squared off tail shape. If you wanted to make it a little more traditional like a twin tip ski, you would just grab some handles and start dragging. You'll also notice this when you grab these particular handles and drag, there's a little red red line that runs along there that sort of gives you where the side cut would extend. You don't want to drag like this where you can see the nose or tail extends past the side cut. You want to keep your side cut with it, or, or the uh, nose shape within that side cut arc so that you don't get any points here which will hang up or catch in the snow when you're initiating turns. Anyway, that's a really, really quick overview of just how to do the basic design. Uh, if you want to change the length of the ski, you generally want to grab the running length handles and drag it shorter or longer to change the length. You can see the table here of points starts changing. It doesn't really work to just type in points. You basically click and drag and you can see what you end up with. So basically you want to click and drag to do that. 
The program also has several different modes and tools. Uh, here you'll see the editing mode we're currently in is in Edit Geometry. There's another mode called Edit Core, where when you click that, it opens up uh, an image of what a wood core of a traditional ski would look like. The white parts indicate tip and tail fill and sidewall materials on the core. And it has a thickness thing here where you can modify, you're looking at the side profile of the ski. If you want to make it really thick in the middle, you would grab this little handle to make it thicker and so on and so forth with the other handles. I tend to not to use the thickness as much. I prefer to do that in another CAD package where I get a little bit more control, but it's definitely a way you can design your ski thickness or snowboard thickness as well. Uh, what I find is really powerful in this mode is once you've got it in the editing mode of Edit Core, under Tools, you get another uh, menu for Core Shaper. And that allows you to get into this secondary menu, which allows you to change the width of your sidewall material Etc. If you drag it to the right, you get super, super wide sidewall material, and drag it to the left, you get normal. Typical skis and boards use sidewalls generally anywhere from about 6 millimeters wide here up to through about 10 millimeters. And uh, there's also a tip spacer type menu here, which allows you to change the type of tip spacer. Currently, they're using what's called a sidewall tip spacer, where it's basically the same width all the way around the tip and the tail of your board as the rest of the sidewalls are. That's good if you want to do a tip through tail wood core where you've got wood extending right up the tip and the tail of the board. But it has several other variations. A radius, which reduces the amount of uh, wood in the core and increases the amount of plastic. If you wanted a more dampened ride, you might in increase the amount of plastic a little bit. If you want a really lively ski or board with a lot of pop, you'll generally go with a little bit more wood. But there's other reasons why you would do that. Another common method to uh, uh, do it is with an interlock where you've got a little notch here in the sidewall method and that allows you to when you've got a loose piece of sidewall material to kind of glue it and fasten it into your core a little tighter than you would otherwise be able to do. The other method that's really common is a straight across where you use a, basically replace the whole tip and tail of the ski with plastic or urethane or some other material and that allows you to dampen the uh, ride of the ski or snowboard on hard packed and icy conditions and reduce a bit of chatter in the nose and the tail. When you're a ski or snowboard is sliding on ice, there starts to be frequencies vibrating through the ski and as they travel up the wood they'll hit this more dampen material and tend to sort of dampen out the frequencies a little bit and hence a little bit quieter ride. The trade-off is you get a little bit less pop and performance than you would if you had the wood extending up through the ski so there's, or, or the snowboard. Uh, but there's you know a, a myriad of different ways you can design uh, your materials within this core shaper mode. The other thing you can do here is change the length of the tip spacer material external to the board. So if you're you know, designing your ski and board for production, you might want to make it longer or shorter. But that's really more of a visual cue than anything. When you're in the radius mode, though, there's this tip spacer radius slider that'll change the radius a little bit uh, smaller or greater uh, in the tip fill material. And a bunch of other different menus and stuff that you can play around with here. Let's say this was the design you wanted your core to be like when you want to export this particular shape that would be the, just the wood here. You would go to the file, oops, sorry, the other file menu, the lower file menu, export DXF, turn off everything on here that you don't want as part of that, and export the core outline. Maybe name it Ski Core or something useful. Oops, helps if I spell correctly. And click. Notice that it's saving to the Documents folder and click Save, and that's all there is to it. The other modes that are available are the Edit Graphics mode. Now this mode is generally just for visual purposes. If you want to design a graphic and kind of see how it's going to fit on the ski shape you've designed, you would go over here and import some sort of art onto your uh, ski. Uh, I'll have to see what I have on my computer that I can even import. Uh, I'll just grab some crazy uh, website photo or something like this. And if I grab that image and drag it onto the ski, you can see that the image starts to show up on this, the actual ski design. So really all it does is, is a visual cue of your graphics. So you would have to still design your graphics in Photoshop, Illustrator, or something like that, but you can actually see how the graphic would look like on the actual ski. Now, if we go back to the geometry mode here, editing mode, edit geometry, 
And there's another uh, mode in that called the rail shaper where you can get in and change the side cut of your ski in a couple interesting ways, uh, ski or snowboard. Uh, currently, the, the radius that's used in the program generally is a quadratic curve. But you can also change that to a seven-point spline. When I do that, it'll actually look like there's nothing, no side cut whatsoever in the ski. But what it does is it creates some extra points you can grab here to change the curve. If you get in and start dragging those points at various parts of the ski here, you can start changing the different arc or, or, or anchor points that the spline is drawn through in the curve. And it's kind of interesting because you can do some uh, kind of funky side cut designs like that where you've got a little more side cut in the middle of the ski, a little bit less, and it fades out in the tip that sort of thing. So you can get in and do some pretty interesting design uh, ideas there and you can change the midpoint of your ski a little bit etc etc. But it's a pretty powerful way to do some interesting side cut designs again just very simply without having to, to get in and calculate a whole bunch of points and draw all the arcs through it like you would in a normal CAD package. The other thing you can do in this is if we get back into this mode here and we'll go to the rail shaper we're going to change it back to quadratic for a second. Uh, a popular thing that started in snowboards by a company called LibTech is called serrated edges or what's known as magnet traction. Uh, this has an a, a ability to add simple magnet traction which is basically waves that go along the side of your ski or snowboard where you can create parts of the side cut that are deeper and other parts of the edge that extend out that really bite into the ice and snow. Uh, some people really like that sort of thing, other people think it's kind of crazy but it does have the ability to design that in your ski or board. How many nodes you have or curves that in that you can change here by going at changing the mode to four and you can change the serration depth. You can see I'm going to go really extreme here so you can see them. That's with four nodes or you can go up to ten nodes and you can see the very pronounced wavy side cut serrations or magnet traction curves are generated. 5.2 millimeters is kind of a crazy depth but uh, I'm doing that so it's uh, easy to see them on the computer screen. You can change up to 14 or even 20 different magnet traction or serration nodes on it, etc., and then change the depth. What it doesn't really do to give you a lot of control is where the curves are going to be exactly, etc. So if you're super fussy about your design, you might need to get into another package to do, the, to do this. But it does offer you a lot of options and a lot of different uh, methods of doing it within the parameters that uh, it does offer. So that's another feature you can uh, do on your uh, skier board. I'm going to just change back to zero and a more traditional shape here. All right, I did show briefly a bit of the export functions of this program, but that's really where this uh, program starts to shine. Uh, generally, when you want to get templates or materials cut, you're going to get them done on some sort of a CNC machine or have templates made from your files so you can cut them at home or in your shop on a, a template driven router uh, by hand. Um, so I'm going to switch over to snowboard mode just for kicks so that some of the snowboard guys don't feel left out that I'm showing everything on a ski file here. And uh, I'll zoom in and etc. Now let's just pretend this standard snowboard is the world's best snowboard design we just came up with and it's absolutely perfect. It's going to blow everyone's mind and sell 100,000 boards in the market and let you retire in style. Um, when you want to export this shape, uh, what you want to do, if you want to export the actual complete finished shape of the ski or the board, you want to go to the lower file menu and click the export DXF button and that will export the drawing exchange format which is compatible with almost any CAD package on earth so that uh, a company could use that to then cut your files on their CNC equipment. In here you've got a whole bunch of different things you can turn off or on to export and I generally like to export one or two at a time rather than a whole bunch. So for instance if you want to uh, export just the main outline you would turn off everything else, click main outline and then you might want to name it something for snowboard design and this is a 161, so I'm going to call it 161. Uh, and I'll name it Outline, just so that it's easy to keep track of what particular file this is. Click Save. It's getting saved to my Documents folder. Boom. And that's all there is to it. And it's exported this geometry. It doesn't have the holes. It doesn't have this bottom stuff or anything. It's just the outline. If you wanted to export the file with the holes, or even this bottom outline or something, you would go back, Export DXF, and if you wanted the stance locators, 
Uh, let's say you wanted to do the core profile, that's that. Inserts, etc. And then export that. You might go then snowboard 161 with inserts, core, and stance. Just so, again, to keep track of it, bang, export it. Uh, a powerful thing I like to do that I also demonstrate in our other video for the CNC router is to export uh, a, a shape that's suitable for cutting your base material or your base template. And what you want to do to do that is go back into this editing mode, into the core editing mode. And most steel edges for skis and snowboards are about two millimeters wide. And if you recall here, in this core shaping mode, it has a sidewall width button here that we could use, that's generally used to demonstrate the width of the sidewall, but if we dial that down to two millimeters, the little white sidewall would actually be exactly the same size as a two millimeter steel edge. So if I were to then export this core shape, technically that's exactly the right sh size to do the base material, assuming you're doing a full wrap steel edge that goes all the way, all the way around your board, and your edges are two millimeters wide. If you're using edges that are like 2.1 or 2.15 millimeters wide or something like that, like some of them are on the market, this template would be a few thousandths too big, but that's a pretty negligible amount and two millimeters is very, very close and, and I would use that all the time in a very simple down and dirty uh, uh, export uh, to get it done quickly. If you want to do it exactly 2.15, unfortunately you cannot do that in SnowCAD. You'd have to go to a, a different package and do the offset there. but for most for all intents and purposes two millimeters is going to work just fine you definitely want your mode as sidewall if you had it like radius or something it's obviously not going to export the right shape so you want to make sure it's set in the sidewall mode close it out and then we'll go file export dxf and this time we're going to just export just the core shape save this as core 161 or better yet, you, you could call it base template or base 161 because technically this, though it is the core shape, we're actually using it as a base template so that actually be more correct and safe. And that's all there is to it. Those DXF files you could then send to a place that has a CNC cutter to cut templates or material for you. Anyway, that's a really brief overview of some of the features in SnowCAD software. It's by no means absolutely complete, but should give you a good head start on how to use it. And I really highly recommend this package. I can't say enough good things about it. It's free for one thing, and it's just super powerful and easy to use compared to traditional CAD software.